In this video, we're going to go ahead and look at setting up your services for your Microsoft Bookings calendar. So this is a service that somebody, a customer could go out to your bookings page and go ahead and actually select a date and time and, and book right there within that specific booking page. The services are also going to be things that are available for you to book yourselves internally for a customer. So in other words, a customer calls up, you can go ahead and, and do the booking directly. So a couple of different ways we can do the services. So I'm going to click on the services link from the menu. And what we can see is that there is already an initial consult set up as a service. Um, we can see that it's an hour, there's no price set, there's no payment required. Um, we can either delete that and start from scratch or we can go ahead and edit it. So if I go into it, I'm going to just start changing some of this. So let's just call this um, initial free consultation. So perhaps you have a business where you offer a consultation for maybe like 15 or 30 minutes, talk to a potential customer about the um, issues that they have or challenges that they have with something so that you can kind of then both ascertain if they are looking for services that you provide and that's accurate and also for them to say yes actually I want to start working with you on something. So we can set up that initial free consultation. So I'm going to go ahead and say um, 15 minute consultation to discuss issues with a consultant. Uh, we can go ahead and put in an address. All right, so we'll just go ahead and set that. We can also add an online meeting. So at the moment, that's with uh, we are currently in um, dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic when I'm recording this. So at the moment, online meeting is likely going to be one of the only ways that you might offer this. So I'm going to say I want to add an online meeting. Now, by setting that, what it does is it will create a um, if you're using Teams, it will create a Teams link and it will use Microsoft Teams or if you're using Skype. So we can use that and it will add in an online meeting link into any of those calendar notification emails that will go out to a customer. All right, so what's the default duration for this? So it's zero hours and it is 15 minutes. Now, buffer your time so that the customers can't book. So buffering the time means I'm adding on an additional amount of time either before or after my session so that that meeting someone books for 15 minutes I'm adding time either side of that because I don't want to have back to back to back meetings potentially so let's say that I have a meeting scheduled at 10 o'clock I might need 10 or 15 minutes to prepare for that beforehand so I can buffer and put in time before. Then afterwards, maybe I need to go and get a cup of tea or coffee or need to go take a, um, a bathroom break or whatever that might be. So I can buffer and I can say um, I'm going to buffer before and I'm going to give myself 15 minutes before and I'm going to give myself 15 minutes after. So, so that way I know that my bookings will be staggered and I'll have time before and after to do whatever I need to do. Um, then we can say we can let customers manage their appointments when it was booked by you or your staff on their behalf. So remember I said that we can put those sessions so that a customer can go ahead and book on our bookings page by themselves. But we also might take a phone call and then book for them. So if we want them to potentially then go ahead and modify that booking later on, we want to select that. That really depends on this type of service or um, appointments that you're providing as to whether you want them to be able to change or um, modify and, and book a different time. Then we've got the maximum of number of attendees per event. Um, price, we are not setting a price, we're going to give it free, so I'm going to change that. Um, and then we can put in notes for ourselves. So this is the free 15 minute consultation offering for potential clients. 
Then what we could do is we can set custom fields. So custom fields, we might want to be able to track additional information. So if I go ahead and I click modify, we can see that there are four fields that are automatically set up. So the customer's email address is required. So this is when someone goes to our booking page and wants to go ahead and book an appointment or a meeting of some kind. The email address is required. I might also require the phone number because I want to give them a call just to follow up or a call to confirm or whatever that might be. In this scenario, I don't require their address. I don't necessarily need any notes. Um, and also what I can do is I can click on it to deselect it because I don't even want it to show up in the form. So what I can also do is I can add a question. I can add a text question or a drop down question. So I'm going to say, please share what kind of uh, details you would like to discuss on your consultation call. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then once I've saved it, I'm going to go ahead and click on it to select it. And I'm also going to make it required. So that way I'm using some of the standard fields that will show up on the booking page. And I'm also using a custom field as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now we can see that there's one required and zero optional custom fields that have been selected. Now what we've got is the option to set up reminders and confirmations. So by default, we have two that are listed. So if I go ahead and choose to edit this one. So this is a reminder one day before that is sent to the customer. And the reminder message will say, we look forward to seeing you. It will also have a link to the actual um, appointment if you've given them the option to change and modify those. So therefore, they could um, either cancel or they could go ahead and change the date and time. So we've got that email reminder and we can change it and we can say uh, two hours before, 15 minutes before. We can add in multiple reminders as well. We can also have a reminder that is sent to a customer, a staff or all attendees. So all attend attendees being both the staff and the customer and if there are additional customers as well. So we can set that up. And then what we can also do is we can add in additional information that will go into that email confirmation reminder. Whatever you want to put in there. Thank you, the team at MBW Consulting. So we can add that additional information in there. Now what we've got is the ability to set the sort of scheduling policies, if you will. And we can see there that it's set to say, use the default scheduling policy, which is what we see below. So I'm going to untick that so we can edit it. Now, this is basically showing time increments, show available times in increments of 30 minutes. Um, for this, I'm going to go ahead and change it and set it to the 15 minutes. And then the minimum lead time, so the minimum lead time for bookings and cancellations. I don't necessarily want someone to be able to book something for the next day. So maybe I want to change that to 48 hours. So we need at least 48 hours notice. And then also how many days in advance can someone make a booking? So maybe you only want to have people make bookings up to 30 days in advance. So we can change that rather than using the default scheduling policy. Now, we've also got some email notifications. So do we want to notify the business via email when a booking is created or changed? Yes, I think so. And then also, do we want to send an, a meeting invite to the customer in addition to the confirmation email? Now, this is interesting and we will go ahead and we'll select this so that we can see in another video what exactly is going to happen. But with this, when we have a booking that is confirmed, it will go out with an email to the customer, but this will send a second email that's pretty similar and will also have this as a meeting invite. However, the original one also has a file that can be downloaded and added to their calendar. And if someone's using Google, it will automatically have a calendar setting at the top as well. So it's almost a bit redundant in having this one, but we'll, we'll have a look at it just so you can see how it works. And then also, do we want to allow customers to choose a specific person for the booking? Do we want them to be able to pick 
who it is that they should be speaking with. Now, this is great if you have um, a hair salon or a nail salon or something where somebody is used to dealing with or working with a specific person. So that we could say, yes, allow them to pick a specific person. I can untick that and then that removes the ability for them to be able to do that and they will just get assigned to somebody. So we'll go ahead and we'll set that for now. And then availability. So in general, a service can be booked when staff, uh, its staff are free. Um, and that is the default setting. But what we can also do is we can say um, they're not bookable or custom hours. And we can basically say, OK, well, we're going to set the custom hours for this as to when this service is available. So on the previous video where we looked at actually setting up Microsoft Bookings, we looked at setting the business information and the office hours or the business hours. This service might have slightly different hours. In fact, this is pulled in from what we set up on the business. But for this specific service, maybe we're only ever going to offer this service in the mornings. So we're only going to offer this up until, uh, let's say, 11.45. And we're going to do that for each day so we can change that so that it's slightly different. OK. All right. So once we're done, we can save that. And now we can see more information about that service. We can then simply click through and add in additional services as needed. Now, what we can also do is we can see here that we can assign specific staff to this service. So maybe this is a service that only Tom is going to offer. So this is going to be a premium consultation and maybe it's only Tom that's going to be involved because the staff that we see here are all of the staff that are set up as as users um, with access to booking so we're going to go ahead and just assign this Tom and then we can go ahead and add in all of the details about that specific premium service so that's how you go ahead and set up your services um, you can put all of those in and then in one of the next videos we're going to go ahead and we will look at how you can manage your team or manage your staff and then we'll move through and then look at the bookings page and so on hi i'm megan walker thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something from it if you don't want to miss out on any other content you can go ahead and click on my face below to subscribe and if you want to watch the next video, you can do that by clicking over here and go ahead and get started. Thanks again.